Welcome, my friends, to Shaking the Salt with Dr. Peppers. My bio reads from troubled teen to teacher of the year, 100 pound weight loss, blah, blah, blah. You know the sort of thing you're working on in your before and after life story. So at the end of the message, stay tuned if you want to contact me for any reason, including prayers. Thank you. And I'm Dr. Peppers, Shaking the Salt. Here we go. Why would God allow such a horrible thing to happen? God, why did you let my child die? God, where were you when they were all in there just beating me up? God, why would you let my house burn down? We can put in things in the negative that have happened to us and friends and family and neighbors and all around the world. God, why would you let America become like this? God, why would you let those people take over? God, why, 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 why? You know what the ironic thing about asking that is? Most of us aren't looking for an answer, don't expect an answer, and we haven't really talk to God in a long time, many times. Sometimes you'll even see devout followers that will say they believe and their life professes that they believe to a certain extent. But then when something good happens, they never acknowledge God. It's only in the bad things, in the hard times of life that God gets the credit for that, but he didn't get the credit for the great times. Many people don't even think there is a God until they have somebody to blame. My husband and I love to blame each other for something being lost, and then we'll bet each other, oh, I bet it's going to be in your room. No, it's going to be in your closet. It's going to be in your drawer. Blame, 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 blame. You know, sometimes things happen. Of course, we all know that book of why do bad things happen to good people? And we could ask conversely, why do good things happen to bad people? It just doesn't seem fair, especially living down here close to where that huge building collapsed on all of those people. And they just recently found a baby and a little toddler, the remains of, I should say. Why did this happen? Why did God allow that? We didn't ask, why did God allow those others to be found alive? Why did God allow so many to escape? Is this really a God thing? Does God dictate all of the accidents and all of the catastrophes? And well, for one thing, we know surely he allows it. He didn't stop it. But we don't understand this old world any more than we understand our own bodies and minds and spirits. We can't even sometimes answer questions as to why we did something, much less as to why God did something. The farther we are away from God, the more time we spend fretting and upset and blaming and asking questions that have no answer. But the closer I personally have become to Christ in the last 10, 20, 30 years, the more I see his infinite love for us, this side of eternity. We have to understand we're just pilgrims passing through. This is not the world we're created for. If we could go back into the Garden of Eden and see how Adam and Eve lived so carelessly and free and so fulfilled and so peaceful until somebody came along and said, did God really tell you not to eat that fruit? Hmm? Well, maybe he didn't actually say not this fruit, maybe this tree, but you know, we can rationalize. We can say why this happened, why that happened. Sometimes we just throw up our hands and get mad at God and say, I don't understand it. And I just need to go to bed. You know, when you deal with people who have been depressed, and when you have friends or loved ones, or even yourself, and you've battled with depression, sleep is an escape. Drugs and alcohol are an escape. A lot of people think that God is just an escape. Well, if I am addicted to God, and that is the worst of my addictions, hallelujah, that's all I can say. But you know, we can't answer why some of us have had parents that have lived into their 90s and others who both lost their parents at a very young age. 
I had read an article recently about, since we live close to Disney World, about the underside of Disney, a whole city underneath the Magic Kingdom where there are people running down, making costume changes, people that are sewing outfits, doing alterations, building some props and equipment, and doing all of the work that's necessary to make everything above ground look like a fairy tale and a beautiful, it's a small world after all. And yet when you go down underneath that side, it's all chaotic and people are saying, hurry and I need this and I'm hurry. Come on, hurry. Blah, 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 blah. We want to make sure that we have all of our parts and pieces going smoothly too. So when others see us, they'll think, oh, how wonderful and beautiful their life is. And I know I'm one that loves to paste fi- pictures on Facebook. I love to put on there what we've been doing the past couple of weeks, and it's fun for me. It's a way to share it with friends and family, and I'm not going to post a picture of the person that I went to visit in the hospital that didn't make it. I'm not going to take a picture of that building that collapsed and put that on there unless it's to ask for prayer. But, you know, in the book of Job, and even if you don't read the Bible, You have undoubtedly heard of Job and all of the problems, and he couldn't understand this, and we always say, oh, you sound like the life of Job. And yet then God responded to him, can you make lightning appear? Can you give intuition to the heart and instinct to the mind? Who is wise enough to count all of the clouds and tilt the water jars of heaven when the ground is parched? He goes on to ask about the animals and to wandering around in hunger. And we don't have to have been brought up in a Christian home to believe, at least to come to believe, that God so loved the world he sent his only begotten son to live and die for us that we might have life and have it abundantly. I had a very unabundant life for so many years because I was my own worst enemy and I was mad at God and mad at myself and mad at my parents and all of the people around me that bullied me and I just hated life. And somebody said, what have you got to lose? What if you say, God, are you really there? If you're really real, okay, do something. I'm through being mad at you. I'm ready to let you take and change my life. Go ahead, God, do it. And he says, take me at my word and see what I will open up for you. Have you ever done that, my friend? If not, if you're mad at God, if you don't understand this world, if you are living a life of hate, maybe despondency, what have you got to lose? God, right now, I pray for that one that is listening, that has been mad, that has been hurt, that has been depressed, despondent. I pray for that one to open up their mind, their spirit and soul to just say, okay, God, if Christ is real, come on into me, change me and make me yours. I guarantee you, my friend, you will not regret it if you really do that. If you really, really know that he has taken control of your life, you won't get mad at him anymore for long. You'll understand that greater is he that is in us than he that is in this world. God bless you, my friends. I pray that you have a wonderful summer, and I pray that you're taking time to be with God each morning, first thing, and turn your life over to him for the day, for the week, for the month, for the year, and forever. I'm Dr. Pepper, shaking the salt. Thanks for staying on, my friend. If you would like to contact me, visit saltandlightministry.com. If you want to share your story with me, ask a question, have me come speak to your group, or maybe just request prayer. Once again, saltandlightministry.com. Thanks and God bless.